everyone, it's Liz here. Um, I am stepping up to the fad that's going around of the Google search. Um, celebrities have done this to find out things about themselves that people have asked on Google. And I thought that I would do a series on EDS and bots. So, the obvious first question. What is Ayla's down loss syndrome. Now there's lots on Google, but I'm taking the first thing that comes up because I could be here all day. And it actually does tell you pretty well a basic description. But if you scroll down, there's lots of other questions people have asked, uh, such as what is the life expectancy of someone with EDS? Um, it says people with vascular EDS are generally poor. Here it's only describing vascular EDS, not other types of EDS. And that's slightly worrying. This is because it doesn't affect other types as much. Is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome fatal? Again, the vascular type. So it's a little bit scaremongering if you don't know much about EDS. Is it considered a disability? If you have vascular or regular EDS with severe symptoms prevent you from working, you might be able to get disability. What they mean is benefits, PIP, blue badges, disabled rail cards, all that kind of stuff. Is it painful? Of course it is. We know it is, um, but it says why. What age is it diagnosed? This is not very good. <laughs> as you can see so I kind of gave up on that search because I think scaremongering is not good um, so try a different question who is Ayla's Danlos syndrome and I thought it would say affecting or famous people but no it doesn't who is Ayla's Danlos syndrome it still tells you what it is nothing more and I had a really good scroll down for the first page and nothing. So then I tried. When is Ayla's Danlos syndrome diagnosed? Now this is a very interesting one. The NHS page when I first got diagnosed 10 years ago was very inaccurate, didn't know much about EDS. I'm amazed. This is super detailed, it's accurate, it's really good for anyone new to EDS or friends and family who are looking at what it is. It even has the new criteria, as you just saw, I scrolled down. Um, and it has the EDS Support UK website link, which is fantastic to have because they are the only EDS support group in the UK. Official one anyway. And it also tells you different types of EDS, not just the usual most popular and most diagnosed hypermobile type. So it's got, not all of them, obviously, there's over a dozen, but there's some. Um, and it also gets an advice. It actually does even tell you um, wh where to go, what to do. Um... I'm really shocked at all of this. It tells you things to do, things not to do. These are things that I've been told by my EDS doctors, so they're not wrong. And it's great, the advice they give you, physio, all that. Um, it also tells you how you inherit it. And actually, I didn't even know this, and <laughs> I've been dying those 10 years. I knew the first one, the 50% risk, but the second one I had no clue about. So... Um, yeah, it's and then it's got links to the charities and everything. Apologies, my cat is being noisy. Alice, shush. Uh, diagnosis again. The it takes you to the Ellis Daniel Support UK website. Obviously, I'm biased because I volunteer for them, but it has everything and it has these um, PDFs that you can use. And also, the website has some webinars. Um, there's loads, tons of information that you can print out and take to a doctor. So next, I put where is, and I was hoping it would say where is Ayla Danlos you know, most diagnosed or most popular, what country, 
Um, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so I put, where is Stanlos syndrome? And then it had all these other things. And no, nothing. Just tells me what Ehlers Danlos syndrome is again. So where is nothing that comes up at the moment? But one thing is for sure that there is a lot more information than 10 years ago because I struggled to find any pages on EDS and we have hundreds. So how is ehlers danlos syndrome diagnosed? It's good because it does tell you a little bit, but it doesn't actually, it says genetic test. It doesn't say anything about the Baton scale. doesn't tell you anything about physical tests or anything like that. So you have to dig a bit deeper. So how is it inherited? Well, we saw on the other page about that, uh, but it basically gives you a diagram and all this. It's it's great. I was I'm actually learning a lot googling this. I don't tend to Google EDS anymore because. I feel like I've lived with it so long and there's not a lot I don't really know about. So then I went down to how common is EDS. Now it says one in 5,000 worldwide. The hypermobile and classical forms obviously most common. And it says the hypermobile type may affect one in 5,000 to 20,000 people. I know Professor Graham thinks it's more like one in 1,000. But I think it's even less than that. I think he does too. <laughs> I know so many people with EDS. How painful is EDS? We know it's painful, but it does acknowledge the fact it's painful. And there's a whole page on the Alice Danos Support UK website on pain. It's great. It's got documents on um, different types of pain, different um, ways of managing pain. It has a video, as you can see, uh, by Dr. Jane Simmons, who's a fantastic physio, who specialises in EDS and children as well. And it's got, like you see, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, coping, management tips, links to other pain management things, pain toolkit. There's tons. You like, it's a place to go. So then uh, I thought, well, what else can I look? Why is Ehlers Danlos syndrome fatal? This is a surprisingly common question I get asked in my support group. Again, the vascular type we know as being more fatal, but none of the other types are. Uh, and this is the disability again, like it's if it stops you from doing something like working then it is degenerative this is really interesting because mine is definitely degenerative i've got worse since i was diagnosed 10 years ago a lot worse now i need a wheelchair most of the time i have worse pain worse symptoms i've collected more diagnoses of other comorbidities of eds so it's definitely degenerative but not for everyone, I have to point that out. Now, is it real? <laughs> um, it Literally, I was expecting pages of people going, it's not real, it's fake. But literally, it's lots of pages confirming that EDS is real. So that was nice to see. Next, I decided to look at, is it fatal again? No, I didn't. Did I? I thought I did. But don't worry, like, complications of EDS, maybe. But... Ah, now, my child has EDS, I thought was interesting. Because it says gastrointestinal symptoms are common. But it doesn't say any other symptoms. And it's like, again, the EDS UK website tells you a lot more. 
it's not just gastro symptoms. People have children with joint pain, with depression, with tiredness is the worst one. I have that at school. I was always off school with tiredness, joint issues. So there's more to be looked into. Don't take that first bit up the top there to be... It's not true. Well, it could be true, but my gastro symptoms didn't come in until I was in my 20s, so... So I had a look down, um, and the toolkit, this is something that I wanted to click on. I'm glad it came out. This is something that's been mentioned recently. It came out in 2017, and here, all of these things, this is what your GP can access. Um, at the bottom, as you can see, that it's been developed by top EDS doctors, nurses, uh, practitioners of different specialities, um, as well as the EDS UK charity. Um, it's fantastic. So if your doctor doesn't know about it, get them to look at it. It's it's on the Royal College of GPs website. It's a toolkit they can use to learn more about EDS and how to treat it and how how to help you more. GPs are key and I find GPs are the worst for me. They don't listen, <laughs> especially real recently. So, is there a blood test? There is to rule out vascular and other types that have got a genetic um, marker for them, but for, for hypermobility type, there is none. No blood tests. This is interesting. When was it discovered? 1901. Now, I had no clue. I knew a bit of the background. I knew it was named after Edvard Ehlers and Alexandra Danlos, but I didn't know it went back that far. So I thought, I want to know more. So this um, information on the uh, NCBI website um, is really interesting. Um, 1901, you recognise the condition, and then... It developed, and then in 1998, the Baton scale was created. Um, but the genetic makeup has been there since the 60s. So people say they haven't heard of it. It's only because of awareness and doctors realising it exists. The syndrome itself has existed for a very long time, but just under a different name or not completely understood. But if you didn't know that, there you go. That's why it's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Most syndromes are named after the doctors who discovered them. So I knew that already, but I didn't know how long ago it was. So um, autoimmune, it's not an autoimmune condition, but it can cause them. Um, I have an autoimmune condition. I've just been diagnosed with Sjogren's disease. Um, you can get lupus, you could get Lyme disease, you can get many other autoimmune conditions associated with ehlers danlos syndrome so so why is ehlers danlos syndrome a zebra it's not but this is why we are zebras when you hear the sound of hooves think horses not zebras this phrase is taught to medical students throughout the training and a medicine zebra is referred to someone with a rare disease and the eds website has the same description but it adds at the end that many medical professions professionals seem to um like just not think outside the box basically and they they just they think of the most obvious things so if you present with tiredness and aching they probably think it's chronic fatigue or me but they they don't think what could it not be? Um, this has happened to a few people. Um, actually, the other week I hurt my elbow and I went to A&E and I went to have an x-ray on my elbow. And the girl who did the x-ray, it was out of hours as well. She said, oh, you've got Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And I was like, yes, because the hospital I went to is my nearest one. And I've had such bad experiences there with them not knowing about EDS and they just don't listen and don't take things seriously. Like if I've dislocated and gone in and I've been in pain, they said, but you're not dislocated now. You couldn't have been dislocated and they don't understand how easy it is to dislocate and 
for us to be able to put our joints back in. So I'd already put it back in, but it was in pain. So I just wanted to check that I hadn't damaged anything. Anyway, I'd gone in, not dislocated, but I whacked my elbow. I thought I'd chip the bone. Um, and it turns out the radiographer had done her uh, major study for qualifying to be a radiographer um, in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So she she was like, oh, it's an umbrella term, isn't it? And she knew all about it. She wasn't lying at all. She she was really, like, I just was speechless. So um, I know that was short. I didn't want it to, I could have done a lot more, but I just thought it was interesting to see what was out there. I'm really impressed that the uh, NHS website is way more up to date, way more accurate. So... If you have friends or family who want to learn more about EDS, direct them to any of those websites. Um, I'd say the ALS Daniel Support UK website is very, very good for printing out things. Um, you can also order leaflets um, and things like that from them as well. But there were lots of websites on Google. Um, just make sure that you don't... Um, like if you're if basically being Dr. Google, like if you have a headache and you Google it, it, you know, it can be anything from a headache to, you know, dying of a tumor in your brain, which is ridiculous because we're all different with EDS, but that's why we're zebras. We all have different symptoms. So I would highly suggest that if you've been told you have something, then Googling it is fine because uh, with my recent diagnosis of Sjogren syndrome, I knew very basic stuff but I've been googling it and found two organizations that are supporting people with shared grins and for me that's helpful but I'm not looking into any more symptoms until I see a specialist so um but it's been very interesting to see what's out there so if you want to uh, watch my next video I'll be doing one on pots uh again the same thing what what's out there on on google on the internet uh, so stay tuned for more. Okay, bye.